morning, everyone. Hope you're all having a wonderful day today. Today on volume one of Best of the Worst, we're gonna be talking about Glock disconnectors. But before we get into the video, if you'd like to help me out personally, you can of course like, share, and subscribe, as all that is free and does help me out quite a bit. Also, go ahead and comment your worst Glock accessory in the comments down below. Now, on top of that, there's also Subscribestar, which is basically a pro to a Patreon, and there's also my website, which has a few things in stock and is mostly always out of stock. But with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into some kind of side grades for the Glock platforms. Now, the way that this video came about, some time ago, I did a video on the Aim Surplus ported barrel and slide combination, which I still really like, by the way. But somehow the topic of Glock upgrade slash trigger slash disconnectors came up, and it was basically put on me by you guys to do a video on Glock disconnectors. Now, full disclosure on the disconnectors themselves, I have no affiliation with any of these companies whatsoever. I paid for them with my own money, except for 50 bucks that Gary tipped me to help cover some of the cost. So, we tested four out of the five disconnectors because one of the disconnectors would not work in this Glock. And before we talk about it, as you can tell, this is not stock. So the trigger shoe and bar is going to be the main component that we're gonna talk about when we get into sort of clarifying the system so you understand how these work in this Glock, not necessarily in your stock Glock because you guys are running stock Glocks, right? Right? Now the internals on this Gen 3 Glock 17 are mostly stock. On the upper, other than the slide and barrel, all the internals are OEM Glock. And on the lower, the main difference is going to be this custom CNC one piece brass trigger shoe and bar. Now on the trigger shoe itself, this was actually a piece that was sent out by a subscriber who was going to be machining these and selling these. That never ended up happening, but the trigger sharp shoe is very pretty, very aesthetic. Again, a single piece of machined brass. Unfortunately, it had a very nice over travel stop that did not work with some of the disconnectors. So I did have to actually grind out the over travel stop that was built into the trigger shoe. So that is the system that all of these disconnectors were tested in. Now, the reason that I'm saying that is so that you understand how these performed in this gun is not going to be how they're exactly going to perform in your stock or modified Glocks. Glocks, given a long enough period of time, generally turn into abominations with a wide variety of eclectic parts from any corners of the internet that people can find. So that is why I'm saying, full disclosure, that these will probably perform slightly differently in your Glocks, whether it's the Gen 3, Gen 4, Gen 5, 17, 19, so on and so forth. Now, finally getting into the Glock disconnectors themselves, we of course have the Zev Pro, which is, spoiler alert, currently in the gun. We also had the Black Yikes 3.0 disconnector from the Glock store, which actually has some very, very good videos on how to set up your disconnectors and troubleshoot just about anything on a Glock. So if you want really good videos, you should check out some of their stuff. The Lantac SSR 3.5 pound, this is the super short reset trigger. We also had the Apex Performance Center. This one here I could not get to run whatsoever. I adjusted the lift a hundred different times, which is basically just how far it's sitting off of the rear trigger shoe. Uh, but Overall, I could not get this one to run in my specific lock. It might be the best, it might be the worst. At this point, I really can't say. Of course, the Zev Pro, which is currently in the gun, and then the Ghost Ultimate three and a half pound disconnector. Now I'm gonna go ahead and roll in the in-shot footage of me testing them out back to back to back to back, just sort of in a dry fire environment, just one after the other, so you guys can kind of get a basic general feel of them, and then I'll go into a little bit more detail. So here is the Zev Pro connector. So you can see pretty standard trigger pull for a Glock. A lot of creep and a very long rolling break, but overall the trigger is about, I wanna say a pound or so lighter with the Zev connector. So it is a big improvement, but the trigger dynamics themselves, the pull, pretty mushy, pretty long, and then a decent reset like all Glocks have. All right, so here is the Lantac SSR, so the super short reset trigger. So you have your normal amount of take up, a long rolling break, and it breaks at the very, very back, and then a pretty short reset, which is nice. Now the trigger weight is about the same as the Zev, though the trigger pull itself is longer, and like I said, it barely breaks at the very back of the trigger, but it does have a short reset. So Overall, the weight is about the same, the pull is about the same. So here we have the Ghost Ink Ultimate Trigger. So this one here has, again, normal take up, 
long break at the back. Pretty nice reset. Honestly feels maybe a little bit better, a little bit crisper than the Zev and the Lantac that has the same reset and trigger dynamics as the Zev. So overall, while it is better than stock in terms of pole weight, maybe a little crisper too, um, it feels just all right. And then last up currently, we actually have the Black Yikes 3.0 connector. So again, it's pretty light, pretty soft, but a lot of take up. Breaks at the very, very back, about five and a half pounds or so. And the reset is no longer audible. Now that could be something with this specific trigger shoe and bar. That's the way it's interacting with the disconnector, but there is no audible reset. The pull itself is good and feels, you know, again, about that five, five and a half pound mark, but it's all the way at the back all the way at the back of this specific trigger bar and shoe. Now getting into the two biggest side grades of the Glock disconnectors that I've tested, that is actually going to be the Black Yikes 3.0 and the Ghost Ink Ultimate, and they are very, very similar. Now these are the lightest disconnectors that I tested. After installing these, it basically dropped the trigger pull by one and a half, two pounds or so, which you might think would make these the best. While these are the lightest and, while, and why I personally consider them side grades is because they completely ruin all of the trigger dynamics of a Glock that make it good for self-defense, home defense, anything like that. While these are very light, what they end up doing is just completely removing the wall and the brake. So basically, instead of having like this is the Zeb Pro connector, you have your take up and then a pretty well-defined wall and then you kind of roll through the brake with the the Black Yikes and the Ghost Ink Ultimate, basically what it does is it turns the entire trigger pull into a mushy rolling brake, and it's not particularly consistent or easy to tell when it's about to go off. So while they are light and they work quick and easy to make shots at distance, because of course they are very light, in terms of something that I would be comfortable carrying in a very stressful situation, these would both be on the bottom of my list. While they are very lightweight and inexpensive, I think all of these Glock disconnectors were about $25 to $40 on the high end. So they're not particularly expensive components. Yes, they do lighten the trigger pull, but it is a side grade. You are getting a lighter trigger pull for a less consistent and a trigger pull that you're not necessarily gonna know exactly when it goes off. Great for target practice or for shooting small groups. However, not very good for self-defense. Now, the next one that we should talk about is the Lantac SSR. Now, out of all of them, the two that I felt were the best for me were the Zev Pro and the Lantac SSR. Both of these are heavier than the Ghost and the Black Yikes, at least in this specific Glock, of course. However, the Lantac, of course, is claimed to have a super short reset. The reset is shorter, but it's like not that much shorter. It's like two, three millimeters. It's like a very, very small amount of a different reset. So while yes, it is short, you're shortening an already short reset on a Glock in general. So it's not that big of an improvement. Now, when I was testing them in the shop, they both felt about the same weight. But when I went out and retested the Zev and the Lantac back to back out in the field, I could tell that the Zev was not necessarily significantly lighter, but definitely had an edge in terms of light and being having a better crisper break which for me made it perform better in terms of one raw shooting speed, even though this does have a shorter reset. However, the lighter crisper break on the Zev Pro made it overall better for me personally. So again, the Lantac is not what I would consider bad by any means and would probably be a runner up. It does somewhat ruin the trigger dynamics of a Glock trigger by having that kind of mushy break, but it does make up for it a little bit by being slightly lighter and having a slightly shorter reset. Overall, it is what I would consider to be a true side grade. Its performance increases are completely offset by the detriments of it. So while it's not bad by any means and some people might actually like it quite a bit, for me, it was just okay. Now, the one disconnector that for me definitely didn't improve the trigger dynamics but it didn't worsen them to an extent where the benefits were not outweighed by them is the Zev Pro Connector. 
So the Zev Pro Connector, if we get into it right now, has kind of that long, mushy take up. And it hits a fairly defined wall, not quite as defined as a regular Glock trigger wheel. And then it kind of has a rolling brake. And the brake is about a pound and a half lighter. It's fairly crisp. It has your standard Glock reset, which is short, not super short, but a short reset. And then again, you kind of roll through that wall again at instead of six and a half, seven pounds, maybe five to five and a half pounds. Now for me personally, that's actually a pretty big improvement in terms of my accuracy out in the field. I was able to run this, I feel, a little bit faster and more accurately than the Lantec SSR or even a stock Glock trigger. So I would say while it still does somewhat ruin the wall of a Glock, now Glock walls are still mushy and hard and you have that rolling break and sometimes they're a little crunchy, but mine is very well broken in at this point. Now, again, it is a good reset. And then you have a nice rolling break at about, again, five and a half pounds or so. So overall, for my money, and again, this one here, I, I think I got a dealer price on it of like $17. The Zev Pro Connector is good. And so it is the one that I would personally feel comfortable carrying and using it in a competition or something like that, because it does retain a lot of the good aspects of a Glock trigger for self-defense, home defense, while still improving the pull weight and keeping a crisp, consistent break. So at this current point in time, that kind of sums up my thoughts on the Glock disconnector debate. While yes, they can definitely lighten the trigger pull and they can somewhat shorten the reset, overall, they tend to kind of ruin the trigger dynamics of the Glock and make it less desirable for home defense, self-defense. Again, having that long, mushy rolling break, like super mushy and very rolling that rolls forever, basically, that makes it very difficult to discern when it's actually going to go off. Personally, if you're looking for a much better trigger in a target gun, just buy a target gun, you know, buy a Canik for 300 bucks and you're going to get a much better trigger pull right out of the box than a stock Glock or even a Glock with an improved disconnector or what have you. And if you want a Glock for home defense, self-defense for the ultimate reliability that Glocks provide, well, then you're probably gonna wanna leave it stock or experiment with certain disconnectors that are not going to absolutely ruin the trigger dynamics of a stock Glock. So with all that out of the way, guys, let me know what you guys think of the Zev Pro disconnector in the comments down below or what your favorite disconnector is, whether it's just a factory polished Glock disconnector or some combination therein. With all that out of the way, guys, though, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Peace off. Oh, good.